Jake here for American Trucks, and today I'm taking a look at the PowerStop Z36 Extreme Truck and Tow front and rear rotor pad and caliper kit fitting various different models of F-150. Now, before we dive in too deep here, because there is a lot to talk about, I do wanna take a moment to note that this kit has a bit of a complicated fitment for a bunch of different models and trims of F-150. So be sure to check the website before you buy, just to make sure that it's gonna fit your particular truck. If you're looking for the ultimate upgrade to your truck's brakes, then you can stop right here because this Z36 kit from PowerStop is gonna tick all of the boxes for you. It's perfect for the owner who is going to be using their F-150 to its full extent. Whether that be hauling, towing, or hitting the trails, this kit is gonna give you everything you need to stop on a dime. I promise you that's the end of the silly brake puns. But that's all to say that going fast is fun, but stopping is even more important. And PowerStop is a company that is founded on exactly what their name implies, and that is stopping. They are solely focused on brakes and braking components, and it shows in the quality of their products. And this Z36 Extreme kit I have here is no exception. This is a super high quality, heavy duty kit that comes with everything you need to upgrade your F-150's brakes. Now there is a lot to talk about here, but we're gonna start with the rotors. These are obviously of the drilled and slotted variety. Now most trucks come with solid discs from the factory and those work fine for most applications, but if you're doing a lot of heavy duty stuff, that extra heat dissipation afforded to you by drilled and slotted rotors is not gonna go unnoticed. Heat is the enemy of braking performance and having the slots and drilled holes here are gonna help dissipate that heat, gives that heat plenty of places from which to escape, channeling it all off the faces of the rotors, either out this way or through the veins in the center. And if you've ever had brakes get hot on you, well, you know that's not a fun experience. But rotors can only do so much on their own without having good pads to back them up. And the Z36 pads here are sort of the unsung heroes. Now these are made with PowerStop's proprietary carbon ceramic compound. They're thermal scorched for an easy break-in and they're designed for severe duty such as hauling or towing. So these are gonna be excellent at dissipating heat while maintaining everyday drivability and giving you a nice long life. Now lots of upgraded brake pads lead to some kind of compromise when it comes to regular use such as just driving around town. However, that is not the case here. There is virtually no compromise in brake performance or feel. And in fact, PowerStop claims that these pads, both front and rear, are nearly dust free. Now, of course, no brake pad is entirely dust free just due to the nature of how they work. But these are a super low dust formula that's going to keep your wheels a lot cleaner. And that's especially nice if you've got some aftermarket wheels on your truck. And of course, we have to talk about the big red elephant here on the table, and that is that you get a brand new set of calipers with this kit. And they've got this really nice bright red powder coat to finish them off. Gives you a nice little pop of color from the wheel. Now this is gonna give you a lot of peace of mind since you know that you've got all new brake hardware, plus you've got these calipers. So it's, everything is brand new in here. They've already got everything pre-assembled. You can basically just set these on and get ready to go. You got dual pistons up front, of course, and your single pistons in the rear. So you know that you're gonna be able to hit the road and you'll be able to stop safely and quickly. The rotors are made using G3000 metallurgy, so this has a higher percentage of carbon in the metal itself versus a standard brake rotor. And like the veins and the holes on the faces, this composition is extremely helpful in dissipating heat. As you can see too, the rotors have this really nice silver zinc plating, and that is throughout, so it's on the fronts, it's on the faces, on the backs of the drums, and even inside the veins too. So everything is coated, and that means it's gonna really help prevent against rust and corrosion. So these are gonna look good and perform well for a very long time. The pads, like we were talking about a moment ago, again, use PowerStop's proprietary ceramic compound. And this again is designed for excellent heat dissipation, that consistent performance and feel with low dust. Now again, PowerStop claims that these are nearly dust free, so you're not gonna get a whole ton of brake dust coating your wheels on the outside. Now, one other thing that's worth talking about is that PowerStop includes all of the hardware you could possibly need to do a full brake job. You get all new stainless steel shims, you get new rubber booties here for your calipers should you need them, and you've got high temp brake lubricant all included in the kit. In fact, this is a little bit of overkill because you've already got the new boots on your calipers here and these come with their own hardware as well. So quite literally everything you need, including the crush washers for your brake lines is all included here. So you shouldn't be in want of anything once you open this kit up. Coming in at around $1,300, this kit does not come cheap. However, good brakes rarely do. 
and this is not a place you want to skimp if your truck sees a lot of usage. Now it's worth reiterating here that there is a lot of good science and technology baked into the rotors, the pads, everything that you see. Plus it comes with quite literally everything you need to get this job done short of the tools and it's going to vastly improve the braking performance of your truck. There are a few places on my own vehicles on which I believe it's worth spending the big bucks. And I'll say that I am running this kit on my own truck, so I can tell you from firsthand experience that it is definitely worth it if you've got the room in your budget. And even if you don't, maybe save a few pennies and make it happen. That's what I did and I have zero regrets about it. Coming in at a soft two out of three on our difficulty meter, installing this is certainly a job you can accomplish at home. Now this is probably gonna take you around three hours or so to complete. There is a lot to do here. Unpacking it is gonna take you some time as well. Now, while this is a totally bolt on system that doesn't require any modifications to your truck, it is worth noting that you are gonna have to do a full bleed of the brake system since you're gonna be opening the brake lines to get these calipers fitted. Now that might sound intimidating, but it's really not a difficult job, especially considering you've got all new bleeders on these calipers here, so these aren't gonna be rusty like some older ones on your truck might be. This is just a job that's gonna be a little bit time consuming, and it's gonna require either a brake bleeder or another set of hands to help you out with that. But fret not, we will show you how to get this whole thing done right now. So with that, let's head over to the install bay. The tools you'll need for this project are a half inch impact gun, a 13, a 14, and a 21 millimeter socket, a 3 8 drive and a half inch drive ratchet, a 12 millimeter socket, a short 18 millimeter socket, a 7 16 wrench, a pair of needle nose pliers with some rubber hose or a brake hose clamp, a ball peen hammer, a clean cloth, some brake cleaner, and some brake fluid. Hi everyone. Today we're installing a set of front and rear brakes on our F-150, so let's get started with the uninstall first. All right, before we actually start the uninstall, first thing you wanna do is check your look and inspect your brake hose. If you see any cracks or, or breaks or leakage on any part of your brake hose, go ahead and replace that first before we disassemble everything else. So once we've checked that out and we know that our brake hose is good, then you're gonna to wanna to get either a brake line hose clamp, or you can use a pair of needle nose vice grips with some fuel line on the end of it to prevent damaging the hose. Then what you're gonna do is just clamp it towards the end of the hose here, just to make sure that you don't lose the fluid from the master cylinder. So we just clamp that on right here. Now we can use our 12 millimeter socket to undo the banjo bolt here and remove the hose from the caliper. Now you will lose a little bit of fluid from the caliper itself, but that's to be expected. Since we're replacing the caliper, the pads, and the rotor, we're just gonna remove the caliper and the caliper mounting bracket in one shot. So we're gonna remove this 21 millimeter bolt here and the 21 millimeter bolt here. And we'll just lift the whole thing out in one move motion. Then you can just pull the caliper straight back. And your system is removed. Now you can go ahead and lift the, cal the rotor off at the same time. And now we're ready to move on to the rears. And just like what we did on the front, we're gonna clamp off our brake hose here and just remove the whole caliper and the caliper mounting bracket and the rotor all in one shot. Now we're just gonna go ahead and remove our banjo bolt with our 12 millimeter socket. And then we'll remove the two 18 millimeter bolts here and here and just remove the whole caliper mounting bracket at once and then slip the rotor off. Now we've gone ahead and grabbed the plug that came with the new caliper to stick in here in the old one to help us reduce the amount of brake fluid that we're actually losing just so it doesn't make as big a mess. 
And we'll use our 18 millimeter socket here. And we move the one on top. Slide our caliper out. Now, depending on which part of the country you live in, you may have some corrosion built up inside here. And you'll need to use a ball peen hammer on the face or on the edge here of the actual rotor to kind of break it loose and pull it out. We've already used our hammer on this, so we've got it loose. So now we can just go ahead and pull the rotor out. Like so. And then we'll just clean up this edge a little bit before we put the new one back on just to make sure that it goes on smoothly. And before we put our new rotor on the, onto the truck here, it's always a best practice to go ahead and use some brake cleaner and clean off the surface of the rotor, front and back, just to make sure that there's no residue left over from the manufacturing process or no contaminants on there from shipping. So just go ahead and spray this down and just use a clean cloth to help wipe it up. Make sure that everything is removed from it and then flip it over and do the back side as well. Now we can go ahead and put it on the truck. And one of the things I like to do is just attach one of the lug nuts just to make sure that it stays in place while we finish installing the rest of the system. Now before we install our caliper mounting bracket on, back on the vehicle, we need to install the new anti-rattle clips. And to install them, this long solid piece of the clip right here is gonna go along this edge of the mounting bracket. So you're just gonna snap that on like so, making sure that these two wings of the clip are at the top of the mounting bracket. And do the same thing for the other side. Just push them in until they're fully seated. Then we can go ahead and put the mounting bracket on the vehicle. Now we will be reusing our original mounting hardware for the new brackets. And we'll tighten those down with our 18 millimeter socket. Now we can install our brake pads. Now the kit does come with some, some lube for the brake pads. They recommend that you put some on the ends of each of the pads, being careful of course not to get it on the pads themselves. And you can also put a little bit on the anti-rattle clips. Now, for our purposes, we're not going to do that today, but to install the brake pads, you just slide them onto the clips like so, and just push them in to the rotor. Now we can go ahead and install the new caliper. To install our new caliper, we're just gonna slide that over the brake pads and push in the slide pins so that it fits back on there. Then we'll reinstall the new bolts that came with the caliper. And we'll go ahead and tighten those up with our 13 millimeter socket. All right, now we're ready to rehook up our brake hose to the caliper. Before you do that, you wanna make sure that you inspect your banjo fitting here and make sure that there are no copper washers or dirt or contamination on the edge of this fitting. Then you're gonna reuse your original banjo bolt and use the provided copper gaskets. Put one on one side, slide the bolt in, and then put the other copper gasket on the other side. 
Now we can go ahead and remove the plug that comes with the new caliper. Insert the locking arm into the hole in the caliper and tighten our bolt down. And we'll tighten that down using our 12 millimeter socket. Now let's go to the front. And just like the rear rotor, we're gonna clean the front rotor as well using some brake cleaner and a clean cloth. Now we can go ahead and install it on the truck. All right, and just like the back, we'll go ahead and install a lug nut just to hold everything in place. Now we're ready to install our anti-rattle clips on the front caliper mounting bracket. To do that, you'll see that there's a rolled edge on the, on the anti-rattle clip. Those are going to go facing out away from the rotor. So your rotor is going to be in here. That rolled edge needs to be on the outside of that. And we're just going to push those in until they're fully seated and do the same thing for the other side. Now it is a tight fit, I will give you that. So it'll take a little bit of effort to get those seated. All right, now that they're in, we can go ahead and get this mounted on the truck. Now we can go ahead and put our mounting bracket back on the truck using the original hardware. And we'll tighten them down with our 21 millimeter socket. Now again, just like the back, we're gonna put a little bit of grease on each end of our pads and a little bit on the clips, making sure, of course, not to get any on the rotors or the pads. So we'll go ahead and slide those in. Now we can install the caliper. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that over our pads, push in our slide pins, and secure it using the supplied hardware. And we'll tighten them down with our 14 millimeter socket. All right, now we can go ahead and hook up our brake hose. Just like the rears, we're gonna have our original banjo bolt, a new copper washer, making sure, of course, that there's no residue or the old washer still attached. Slide it in, put the copper washer on the other side, and then insert it into the caliper. And we'll tighten that down with our 12 millimeter socket. Now that we've got the front and the rear done on one side, you can go ahead and repeat those processes for the other side as well. Now, once you've got both sides done, front and rear, then we'll go ahead and we'll bleed the brake system to make sure that there's no air in the lines and there's plenty of pressure for the brakes to work. All right, now that we've got all four wheels done, it's time to bleed the brake system to make sure there was no air in the system. And you typically wanna do this starting from the wheel that's farthest away from the master cylinder, which in our case, would be the passenger side. But for our purposes today, just to make it easier to show you, we're gonna be doing the driver's side first. And to do that, you're gonna need a second pair of legs or a second pair of hands, however you wanna look at it. And you're gonna ask them to pump up the brakes about three or four times and hold the pedal down. And while they're holding it down, you're gonna take a wrench 
In our case right now, this is a 7 16 flare nut wrench. And we're gonna loosen this bleed screw right here. While they're hold, still holding pressure on the brake pad. Once they've got the brake down, we're gonna open that up, let the fluid and the air come out of the system, and then we'll close it up and we'll ask them to pump it again and we'll open it again while they're holding pressure on it until, and we'll keep repeating this process for each wheel until there's no more air coming out of the system and all we're getting is just brake fluid. So we're gonna remove this cap over the bleed screw. And you wanna make sure that you put this back on when you're done, keeps dirt and grime and everything else out of there. So when you do need to bleed it again, there's nothing to block it. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Go ahead and pump it, please. Hold it. And we'll open it. First, you have to remove the clamp that's on your hose as well. Now we'll go ahead and close it. Pump and hold. Open it. All right. Now, as you can see, there was no more air coming out of that brake line. So this one is done. Now we can move on to the rest of them. And that's what you're gonna to need to do. Just one at a time, starting from the farthest away from the master cylinder, move to the next closest, the next closest, and the closest. Once you've got all that done and all the air bled out of the system, then you're good to go and you can follow the manufacturer's recommendations for breaking in the brakes. And that wraps up our review and install of the PowerStop Z36 Extreme Truck and Tow Six Lug Brake Rotor Pad and Caliper Kit for the front and rear on the 12 to 14 two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive F-150, the 15 to 17 F-150 with manual parking brake, and the 17 to 18 F-150 Raptor. Thanks for watching, and remember, for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.